Success is not about getting it done. It is about still dreaming and feeling positive in the unfolding. So quite a few years ago, when I was still an entertainer, I was up in Canada doing some shows, and someone contacted me and said that they uh, were having Eileen committed. And I said, for what? She was a singer. They said, well, she's gone mad. And I said, I, what do you mean? They said, well, you know, if you go to her apartment, she's got this really weird thing up over the door, and when you ask her what it is, she said, when the time is right, I'll let you know. And says, and she said she's the, the Virgin Mary, and she's marrying Jesus Christ, and she gave away all of her music arrangements because she isn't going to need them anymore, and um, they went on and on. And so I called a friend of mine, a psychiatrist in Spokane, and I told him the story, and I said, what do you think? He said, does she have any family? I said, not that I know of. He says, well, I said, you better let him commit her. So they did. They, they all went down, all my friends had testified and had her put away at Medical Lake out there. So when I got back to Spokane, everybody was afraid to go there because of those people. But I'd go every Sunday and visit her, and another, one other person, a strange person, would go visit her. And uh, we'd sit and talk to her, uh, you know, once a week. And one day, she says, I just, I just can't stand it. She says, they take all my clothes off, they got me in this room naked, and they were all peeking at me, the little holes, and, you know, I'm laying on the concrete floor, and they're observing me. And she says, I, what have I done wrong? I said, well, you told them that you're uh, the Virgin Mary and you're going to marry Jesus and you got this weird thing up over your door and, and they're afraid you're going to commit suicide because you've given away your, all your music arrangements. She said, well, no, that's true. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I got this man. And she said, I've never had sex in my life, so I did see myself as a virgin and I think he's as pure as Jesus. And she said, but I didn't say I was the virgin or that he was Jesus. I said, I was just kind of relating the two. And she said, and uh, she said, you know, I'm coming you know, from a 350 pounds. Oh, and they also said she gave away all her clothes. She said, I didn't give away all my clothes. She said, if you go to my apartment down at the Davenport, she said, you'll see it. My clothes are still there. She said, my music arrangements are right there. And she says, you go look over my door and see if this, this weird thing that, uh, that I'll someday explain. So uh, this other person and I went down to the manager of the place, and we got the key, had her letter from her or some fool thing, and we went to her apartment. And the first thing I went and looked up over the door, Oh my goodness, there it was. They had like, there were like five Christmas cards, and there were four above that. And then above that, there were three. And above that, there were two. And I'm thinking one more would make that a Christmas tree. But they all thought that was some reason she should be put away because that was just too weird for them. So, anyway, so then I went in her closet and had all these beautiful clothes all hanging there, all beautiful shoes that she was going to get married in hanging there. I didn't see all her clothes gone. So I went to her satchel where she carried, you know, big leather satchel where she carried all her professional, you know, handwritten arrangements. She was a vocalist, and uh, all her music arrangements there, she said, told us, she said, well, I, I gave away some sheet music I'd had since I was a kid. This kid was wanting to start in the music business, and I said, I've got some old stuff I'm not using. I said, I can give away my arrangements. So I went back, and uh, I called uh, Dr. Flynn, and, and uh, I told him the story, and they let her out the next day. But uh, my point was, everybody, even her dearest friends, were so sure she was insane. And, in, and the professionals, they all judged her as insane. And it turned out she was just normal, but had a little more imagination than some of my other friends, kind of thing. I just thought I'd throw that in as just a, my story. <laughs> what? Well, there are a lot of things that that stirs up. In other words, does it make you feel empowered or disempowered? It makes you worry that others have power over you. And it makes you feel that you'd better conform, doesn't it? In other words, you better not get too far out there because if you get too far out there, someone might misunderstand and make trouble for you or not accept you or not like you or not allow you or let you into the right club or into the right heaven or whatever. And then some of you are born who have seen societies moving further and further away from personal individual guidance, from personal individual fulfillment of reason for being and so you're born with stronger than ever intention that this time they're not going to cause you to conform and so you're just way 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 out there impossible to conform sometimes you are born with what you call birth defects where your mind just doesn't function in the same way so they have to allow you to be different sometimes you're born with other physical disabilities where they just have to allow you to be different because you come forth so determined that you are going to express in a powerful way your understanding of the value of diversity 
You live in a world that's almost got mad with the idea of sameness. Let's take all the ideas that exist and whittle them down to just a few good ideas. People on the other side of the world having other religions, another way of looking at things. And so you try to persuade them and then you condemn them. And then if they don't listen and will not listen to your conversions, then you drop bombs on them. In other words, there is such a sort of physical sickness that comes from believing that there are only a few good ideas and that your good ideas will be threatened if the rest do not join them. Even if a lot of you become those who are wanting to make the world conform, you are bucking a current that you cannot buck because you live in a universe that is based upon diversity. It's based upon difference. It's an expanding universe, not a shrinking universe. So you never need to worry because new ones are being born every day. They're being born with a stronger understanding. Those that are old and stuck in their ways are croaking and going out the other end. So the dilution ratio always stays in this healthy place where you do not need to worry about it you see there is not anything to worry about but if we were standing in your physical shoes we would be taking pride in our renegade nature of difference and we would try never again to conform and we would reach this powerful place where we never again try to modify our behavior based upon appealing to someone else's impression of how we should behave we would say to anyone who is willing to listen, I love you, but I do not give a rip what you want me to do. I'm following my own guidance system. It's a loud, clear message. I've been launching rockets of desire. Who I was before I was born and who I have even further become is now calling me with a very loud signal. I can hear the signal calling me. It feels like joy. It feels like love. It feels like passion. It feels like adoration. It feels like fulfillment. It feels like exhilaration. It feels like vitality. It feels like clarity and when it calls me I always try to lean in that direction and oh what every now and again I get swept up in what others want and I find myself feeling a little, little less free and I find myself forking off in the direction that makes me feel like fear or even resentment or even anger but now I'm aware of my guidance system I can tell which way is the right way for me to go so you can all out there in the peanut gallery beat your drum you can make your laws you can make every decision in the world about how you think I should be but I am finally being the one I've come to be I'm following my own bliss I'm listening to the beat of the energy that flows forth from within me and it never tells me wrong and as more and more and more are doing that those who come forth understanding that will begin to relax fewer will get suppressed where it squirts out in multiple personalities or whatever those diagnoses are that they're wanting to give and more and more and more of you will be living your life in the joyful way that you've come forth to live it not one of you said I'll go forth and I'll figure out what everybody's doing and then I'll conform to what they're doing not one of you said that you said I'll go forth and I'll appreciate their conformity because it will give me a platform from which to launch my intentions but I'm gonna put my two cents worth in pretty darn fast as soon as I get there so I'll be born into an environment where they'll feed me and I'll be stable and then I'll figure out as quickly as I can what I want from there and I know this source will agree with me and give me the circumstance and its events to fulfill it and I'll do my best to stay true to the dream to the dream that is born within me and when I go to the therapist that said you should not dream you should face reality I'll stand up and with all of the fervor of my being I'll say we are eternally evolving. We cannot stand still. Please do not ask me to focus upon what is. Let me focus upon what can be. We get a little worked up on that because it is what all of you intended as you came forth into these bodies, you see. Not one of you intended to be suppressed. You all intended to find your path and let your light shine in your unique way. And as you compare yourself with each other, you lose track of what way is your way. But as you listen to the way you feel, as you listen to your gut, then you can tell what way is your way. And we've never known anyone who was ever, ever happy, not even a little happy, doing something that somebody else wanted them to do. If you're not satisfying your own dreams, you're on the wrong track. 
You must follow your dream. You cannot be a cog in the wheel of somebody else's dream. The universe will support you. Find your dream and follow it. And tell everyone else to buzzle. <laughs> yes. yes. One of the fastest ways to make your way to a wonderful relationship is to find any subject that consistently feels good and focus on that even if it has nothing to do with relationship.